Our next guest is a chaotic man with a new book full of insight into his ridiculous brain. It's called Dumb Ideas, a behind-the-scenes expose on making pranks and other stupid creative endeavors, and how you can also, too. I feel like I've been pranked just having to read all those words. <laughs> it comes out November 14th. You can see him live on the Eric Andre Explosion Tour. Please welcome Eric Andre. <laughs> You are a ridiculous man. Uh, you really just, are. I just want to do that the whole time. I don't want to talk about myself. <laughs> what do you, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Your guitar player looked up from his phone and was like, what is this? <laughs> he speaks uh, no English at all, so leave him a break. Right, Toshi? All right. Uh, what have you been doing? Like, what have you been up to? I went to Mexico and I smoked toad venom. Now, most people, I would say, oh, that's got to be a joke. But with you, no. I'm thinking, yeah, you probably did do no, that. No, OK, so there's a toad that lives in the Sonoran Desert that hibernates for nine months out of the year in the mud. And then it comes out of the mud like Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> and it eats rats, and it fucks hot other toads. It eats and, rats? Yeah, it eats rats. It's a gnarly toad. It's, it's a big toad, I would imagine. It's a big, giant toad. But if you smoke the venom, off of its legs, <laughs> you get high out of your mind. I sailed into the anus of the Milky Way galaxy, <laughs> spun around Saturn's rings, and I had Thanksgiving dinner with God. It was unbelievable. Really? Yes. For real? Yeah, no, it's a, you have to do it. How long? Well, you I, have to do it tonight, actually. Right no now, who wants Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> I will never it's have it. Really, it's crazy. It's a DMT derivative, so. I it's, don't even know what that means. It means yeah. DMT. That's what the kids are into. OK, nowadays. all right, all right. It's D a strong hallucinogenic. I see, OK. And, and you release it in your brain when you die and when you're born. It's incredible. So it's kind of like ayahuasca, but on acid. If ayahuasca did acid, it'd be toad. It's it. above ayahuasca. It's on the, miles above really? ayahuasca. It's on the 88th floor. Yeah, it's insane. And the toads must really be confused when you're there with your whatever you smoke it. How do you roll you it up? You smoke it in like a little crack pipe. You like scrape it off the legs of the toad, and you smoke it in a crack pipe, and you go, yeah, you go right into Do you bring Neptune. your own crack pipe, or do they have that for you? Do you no, have a rental uh, situation? Uh, it's a, the guy, the shaman, he looked like a skinny Guillermo del Toro. And he had <laughs> all these cool Tibetan singing bowls and a great, he had a great crack pipe. Okay. So I used his crack so pipe. So you recommend it? I highly recommend it. Is it, it. on it Yelp? A... How would people find <laughs> that? How would people get to that guy? It's on Postmates and Uber Eats. You are. Uh, no, I, 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 I got a number. I'm not going to say it out okay. loud on television. Would but be I funny got a guy. if you did, though. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny I got if you, a guy. every time you sign one of these books, you write the guy's number in the back. <laughs> I mean, it is a dumb idea, right? <laughs> yeah. it might you, um, not, it might you're in the middle of a tour right now, the yes. Eric Andre Explosion Tour. Yeah. I know. I happen to know that it's not your typical tour. No. No. What it, could people expect to see on this tour? It's like if um, Carrot Top went into a violent, violent rage and <laughs> tried to attack everybody in the audience, destroy all the furniture on the stage, sprayed as much ranch and other salad dressings into the audience. Uh -huh. I mean, I bring, I'll bring i bring like a middle-aged man out of the audience and tie him up to this like Janet Jackson sex swing. And I'll, I'll motorboat his pickle tits and his jelly belly. Uh -huh. It's a very it's very interactive, gonzo. It sounds, yeah, it sounds very interactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just joke telling. It's, <laughs> it's a live talk show. It's a live talk show. It's like this, but. Who do we, you interview on the show? I just interview randos from each city that I'm in. I, I can't. It's I can't afford to bring Olivia Rodrigo are they truly... to each, each town. <laughs> are they truly randos, or are they like is somebody interesting in the town? There's somebody interesting in the town. It was like in Kansas City, it was like the world's most famous marble lady and stuff like that, I'll interview. Marble lady? Like she owns marble? She owns a bunch of marble. She has the Guinness World Record for having the most marbles or something. But then we'll like, you know, set off explosives under her chair. And right, we right. Have like rats and snakes come out. And, and she like reacts, that. they react positively, like to the pickle tits and whatnot? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Some, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> There's a book, lot of nudity as well. There's a lot of nudity. This book, I want to congratulate you, first Thank of you. all, 
Um, the book has uh, been named Oprah's Book Club selection for uh, this month. <laughs> And uh, that was, that has I to be a thrill. I for a second. That's where my <laughs> ego is at. I was like, yeah, you know what? Oprah would like this. <laughs> this book. She could do a lot of stuff to Gail if she goes through this thing. <laughs> you and I have a fondness for pranks. We have yes. that in common. In fact, we do a show together. Yes. Um, and I, I quit many times. I, and I you, apologize. You did You were quit. my therapist. How many times do you think? Now, I heard you tell the story on Howard Stern's show, yeah. and I feel like you just barely scratched the surface. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, you baby. just barely How deep do you want to go? scrape the um, <laughs> the venom off the frog's legs, if you will. <laughs> you actually, people, you know, I think laugh and say, "Oh, he quit," but you actually, you're like, "Hey, listen," you call me like, "I just," because uh, Johnny Knoxville is one of your co-hosts and Gabby Sidibe. Yes, and, and he is, and, uh, and, and I, I love Knoxville and I love Gabby, but there was a point where every one of us had a weapon on us while we were shooting the show. Uh -huh. The show yeah. is like Shark Tank for pranks. So people come on, they pitch. They're pranks to us, and, and we are the three judges, and we have to decide whether we want to do their prank or not. Uh, but Knoxville's a crazy person, so yeah. he wants to prank you as he's pranking the other people. Mm -hmm. And a prank for Knoxville is just assault with a deadly weapon. He, hit me, <laughs> he, he would hit me with a taser and a stun gun every day at work, and I quit. And um, then I came back, and I talked to Jeff Tremaine, who, who co-created Jackass with Knoxville, and directs all the Jackass movies. He's worked with Knoxville for 30 years. So I go, what do I do? This guy's killing me. He goes, he's never gonna stop. He's never gonna stop attacking you. He's gonna put rat traps in your mailbox and break your fingers when you go to grab your mail. So you have to get him back. Page 63, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to get him back. So I have like a police grade stun gun by my bed. So I brought that to work. I hid it in my clothes. And while he was talking to one of the contestants, I pulled it out and I hit him right in the center of his heart with it, because I, I wanted to take him down. No, don't don't say, oh, he's trying to kill me. It's Johnny Knoxville. He's trying to kill me, it's Knoxville. He gets hit, he's got 17 concussions and a brain hemorrhage, he's fine. So I hit him in the heart with a stun gun, and he's so impervious to pain, he just started going, mm. Then he grabbed the stun gun out of my hand, and he pulled another stun gun out of his pocket, and he just started nailing me with both weapons until I ran, ran away. Super villain. And then I could, that was probably like the first time I I'm gonna time tell I you that, and it's, there was a moment in our conversation that I thought, oh, these guys are pulling a prank on me. Yeah, because yeah. you and I had a long talk here, like, he's a maniac, <laughs> it's enough, I've had enough, I'm not, I'm done, I'm done with the show. And I was like, please, you gotta, we filmed half of the show, you gotta come back. And you're like, no, no, I said, listen, I'll talk to him. I promise I'll talk to him. I call him, I'm like, listen, you gotta, make this right. He calls you, you guys talk for like an hour and a half. Yeah. He calls me afterwards, it's all good, yeah. we talk, we had a great talk, yeah. we're fine, I'm gonna not leave him alone for the rest of the thing. Next morning, eight o'clock in the morning, you walk in the door, he tases you, yeah. immediately yeah. you turn around, walk right back out and go home. <laughs> Lunacy. Yeah. Lunacy. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, there are a lot of really good ideas in this book. Yes. Yes. So it's not only, I wrote it with my lovely, fantastic, funny, very funny writing partner, Dan Curry. There's and Dan. it's pranks you can do at home, but it's also behind the scenes tales of the trials and tribulations. Yeah, there's of a lot of very funny stories in here. Prank making. There's a story about me in here. There's a story about my son in here. Yes. All sorts of stories. <laughs> yes. It's called Dumb Ideas. It, do not confuse it with the Mitt Romney book. It is not um, <laughs> the same thing. November 14th, and see Eric live on the Eric Andre Explosion Tour. Tickets yes. at ericandretour.com. Thank you, Eric. We'll be back Thank with you. Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs>